It's Professor Dave, and I've got a fever. He knows a lot about the science stuff, Professor Dave explains. In 1896, a mysterious deadly illness spread through the Snake River Valley of Idaho. Some people called it black measles because of the black skin rashes it caused, and others called it spotted fever. Hundreds of people in Idaho got sick, and by the early 1900s, the disease had spread to surrounding states. Imagine living nearby and having no idea what was causing it. Two scientists named Lewis Wilson and William Chowning investigated the outbreak and published their findings on this spotted fever in the very first volume of the Journal of Infectious Diseases. A few years later, in 1906, a pathologist named Howard Ricketts identified the cause of the outbreak, a newly discovered bacterium that was later named after him, Rickettsia rickettsii. Most people infected with Rocky Mountain spotted fever experience a headache, chills, and fever, followed by joint pain, fatigue, and a feeling of weakness. Sometime during the first week, a rash develops, beginning on the hands and feet, which can spread and become darker over time. In severe cases, patients might have brain irritation, labored breathing, or poor circulation, and some become comatose and die. Let's back up and talk about how this works. Rocky Mountain spotted fever is transferred to humans by ticks, either the American dog tick, Rocky Mountain wood tick, or brown dog tick. Ticks are the main reservoir and vector for the disease, and adult ticks spread the infection to humans when they feed. The bacteria that the ticks transfer, Rickettsia rickettsii, are incredibly small, so much so that they were originally thought to be viruses. These bacteria are gram-negative rods that take advantage of a natural defense mechanism in our cells called phagocytosis. During phagocytosis, an immune cell binds to something specific it wants to destroy, like a virus or infected cell, and engulfs it, drawing it inward to start the destruction process. In this case, Rickettsia rickettsii bacteria trigger phagocytosis, but instead of being destroyed, they're able to multiply and spread, causing damage to cells and leaking of blood vessels. If left untreated, Rocky Mountain spotted fever can cause complications, including hearing loss, mental disability, paralysis, and even the necessity for amputation of legs, fingers, arms, or toes. Diagnosis is a bit tricky, since the first symptoms you might experience are typically pretty general. However, healthcare providers can order blood tests to look for evidence of the bacteria, especially if you know you've been bitten by a tick. Rocky Mountain spotted fever is usually treated with the antibiotic doxycycline, which is especially effective when the infection is caught early. Since there's no vaccine for this disease, prevention is usually centered around preventing tick bites. Educating yourself about where ticks normally hang out and what different kinds of ticks look like, as well as treating your clothing and gear with the insecticide permethrin can be helpful for prevention. In addition, if you're the hiking type, always check your body and clothing, as well as any pets that come along, for any ticks after an outdoor excursion. Thanks for watching, guys. Subscribe to my channel for more tutorials. Support me on Patreon so I can keep making content. And as always, feel free to email me, ProfessorDaveExplains at gmail.com.